DNM dive coasters are one of the most popular models in the entire world. They offer unique ride experience with the holding brake and first drop, and most of them have pretty good layouts that follow. I still think dive coasters are one trick ponies, but they are still good overall coasters. From a park's perspective, B&M dive coasters are reliable and will give a park a good return on investment. They are a crowd pleaser and eye candy, you can't really ask for much more. And in today's video, there are 16 dive coasters in the entire world and we are going to rank them from worst to best. Coming up in last place is Dive Machine G5. I wouldn't say this coaster is terrible, none of the coasters on this list are, but there has to be ones better than the others. This is an Oblivion clone, so the layout is pretty meh. You drop and turn around. But this coaster is way worse than Oblivion because it doesn't have the amazing underground section that we'll get to talking about in a few seconds. It goes underground a bit, but it's not dropping into the never-ending abyss that Alton Towers dug out. So yeah, pretty basic layout with less of the amazing tunnel, that's why it falls into the last spot. Next up is Flying Apsaras in Western Regions. Besides having a terrible name, this coaster also has a terrible color scheme. Like, look at the goofy all blue and purple. This coaster has the same idea as Shikra in terms of what it tries to do. Like if Shikra had a 4 foot 3 little brother, this would be him. Flying Aspera even has smaller trains, 6 rows instead of 8. These two coasters share the exact same elements, they even both have a splashdown. The only difference is, one is 40 feet shorter than the other, and one is so much better than the other. And that's kind of why Flying Aspera follows this low in the rankings, it's a smaller version of Shikra that doesn't achieve much. In the 14th spot is Kraken. This is one of the dive coasters that falls into the category of not doing much. There's a drop, an Immelman, and that's about it. The thing with Kraken is it's very well themed. The first drop goes into a Kraken's mouth and into a splashdown. It's pretty cool to watch from on the train and from afar. Add on top of that an Imus Core soundtrack and I am pretty much satisfied. One thing on this coaster that is somewhat interesting is there is a Camelback. I have no idea if it gives airtime or not, but it's there. So a super short, well themed dive coaster. There's a lot more of those to come on this list. In the unlucky 13th spot could be a little bit more controversial of an opinion. It is Val Raven at Cedar Point. This is one of the hyper dive coasters, so you think it would be pretty crazy, right? Well, not really. Val Raven has super weak elements in general and a very sluggish pacing. The only good thing about it is the first drop. It's literally a one trick pony. The overall feel of it is more like a hyper coaster. The bad pacing just makes for super graceful elements that you probably aren't looking for on a coaster of this type. So while the Val Raven looks super cool, rides super well, it's not actually a good coaster. Except if you ask any GP, they will say it's the number two coaster in the park, only behind Steel Vengeance. You're dumb as a mule and twice as ugly. Next up is Oblivion. This has the same layout of Flying Apteris and is the original dive coaster. Oblivion doesn't do much. It drops and turns around. That's pretty lackluster compared to most dive coasters on the list that we have mentioned. The thing that makes Oblivion so cool is that you just drop into nothing. Wilton Towers has a super strict high limit, so they dug out a massive hole instead of going up. This coaster is 180 feet tall, but only stands 60 feet above ground level. 120 feet of this coaster height is all underground. To put this into perspective, this coaster is only 20 feet shorter of Shikra's height, so dropping into a massive black abyss of darkness is what makes this coaster so cool. Not the layout, not the crazy forces, but the experience of dropping into nothing is what you can't get elsewhere. Next up is another Oblivion, Oblivion the Black Hole. This coaster is another very short but sweet layout. Unlike most dive coasters though, the forces are a lot more present. There is some good floater in the drop, but every dive coaster has floater in the drop. There are positive Gs in the Emilman and there's some floater on a camelback. What makes this coaster so good is the out of this world beaming. You drop into, well, like a black hole. Inside the black hole there is fog and flashing lights, which makes it seem like an acid trip. On the outside, the black hole is sucking in various objects. I don't know how well you can tell this when riding the coaster, but it is very apparent while walking around the themed area. So an extremely short ride duration and good theming is what lands this coaster in this spot. Starting off our top 10 is Diving Coaster at a Happy Valley. This is a Shikra clone that even shares some of the colors as Shikra. This coaster is tall, does an Immelman, and meanders around. It's still a better layout than most dive coasters, but it's not the best thing in the world. The rewarding aspect of this coaster is it's tall, it looks cool, and has an epic splashdown. The reason this dive coaster falls short of the normal Shikra is the lack of theming. It usually is a tough competition between Bush Gardens theming and Chinese theming, but this time China loses. This coaster kind of just sits on a mad plot of land and does not do much. Next up is the dive coaster at my home park, Emperor. I have a whole review on this coaster on my channel, so if you want, I would recommend you to go check that out. This is a very short and sweet layout with absolutely no theming. Emperor is super well paced and never loses its speed from the first drop to the final brake grind. This makes the coaster very, very enjoyable, but also extremely short. 
there are amazing positives in the first drop in the Immel bin, and the barrel roll and corkscrew have a good amount of width. This coaster feels a lot less like a dive coaster and more like a floorless with the layout and the elements that it has. However, the short ride duration and lack of beaming makes it fall short of a lot of other dive coasters. One quick thing to mention is Emperor has best restraints, which I believe is the first coaster to do so on this list. Best restraints and normal over the shoulder restraints don't feel that different on a dive coaster, so I don't reward or take away coasters based on what restraint they have. These are dive coasters you're talking about anyways, they are basically forceless. In the 8th spot is Shikura. We already kind of talked about it in its clone diving coaster, but Shikura is better because of a nicer environment and theming that it has. The overall layout is massive drops that all give great airtime, and you add the splashdown and it's an overall solid coaster. Next up is Dive Coaster at Chimelong Paradise. This coaster shares a lot of similarities with Shikura as well. It has an immelment, there's a splashdown, it's tall. But it's not as tall as Shikura, and it has its own custom layout. Once again, this dive coaster is defined by massive drops that all give great air time. This coaster also flies through its mid-course brake run, so you have even better air time off that second drop. The theming on this coaster is very subpar, and honestly, this was the hardest coaster to place in this list, but I think it makes a lot of sense in the seventh spot. Next up in the number six spot is Baron 1898. When you tell me a short and sweet B&M dive coaster, this immediately comes to mind. This coaster has a very short layout that pulls very good forces. All the elements are decent and everything hits in a way. However, you can completely forget about the layout because this is Baron 1898 we're talking about. This dive coaster has the best theming out of every coaster in this category. You can literally just look at the station and be mind blown. It's so cool. The list structure looks amazing and I can literally just stare at it for days. I value theming, so when I see that it, it's very well done, I really, really appreciate it. There is even a short dark ride section, like, that's literally my favorite thing in the universe. And to make things even better, it's topped off with an Ivascore soundtrack. I literally can't ask for better theming, and that's why this coaster makes it in the 6th spot. Not an amazing layout, but it has absolutely amazing theming. Starting off our top 5 is Valkyria. Valkyria is similar to Emperor in the fact that it has amazing pacing. With amazing pacing comes better elements and good width and all that amazing stuff we all love. Valkyria has a little bit more diversity in terms of the layout, so that helps its case a lot. The elements hit slightly better, making it a great B&M dive coaster. The setting of this coaster is also super nice. There's no direct theming except for a fire I'm a score soundtrack. And honestly, I think this is the best colored B&M dive coaster. I absolutely love the gold track and it looks sick. Anyways, this dive coaster with an actually good layout gets the fifth spot. Up next is Griffin. This might be a lot more familiar to most people. Griffin is an absolute beast of a dive coaster, falling in the hyper coaster category. There are massive drops on this coaster that give good floater airtime, and that's basically it. The splashdown adds that extra touch that makes it even better, and the second inversion compared to Shikura's is much, much better. That sums up Griffin for you. It's a beast of a dive coaster that delivers good forces. It's like the book definition of what this model can do. Starting off our top three is Draken. This is a lot less known dive coaster, but it's a Griffin clone that is located at Korea. You know how I said Griffin is the baseline for a good dive coaster? Well, Draken takes Griffin, like literally takes Griffin, it's a clone, and adds theming on top of that. I don't think I need to explain any more. The theming alone makes it better than the OG Griffin and puts it into the top three B&M dive coasters. Number two spot goes to Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger. When you talk about a super well-rounded dive coaster, Dr. Diabolical's comes to mind. This coaster is not massive, it's not the biggest, tallest, most fastest thing in the world, but it absolutely gets the job done. This is probably the best first drop on any B&M dive coaster. The layout is also very good with most of the elements delivering. And to add the cherry on top, there is theming. This is Six Flags we are talking about, and there is theming. And this is also 2022 Six Flags that we are talking about, and there is theming. I love what Six Flags did with this coaster, with the pre-show and the storyline. I just wish every Six Flags ride was like this. Anyways, super well-rounded dive coaster. And the number one B&M dive coaster in the entire world is Yukon Striker. Yukon Striker is an absolute beast of a dive coaster. This is the tallest dive coaster with tons of bigs and inversions. It takes everything that Griffin does well and improves upon that. Most dive coasters don't do much with their elements, but all the inversions on this coaster hit and hit well. While it may be lacking in the theming department, it definitely has the best layout and is the best dive coaster. That's all for today's video guys, let me know if you agree with my decisions in the comment section below, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe, I'll see you in the next one, have a great rest of your day, good bye.